Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metalholic Magazine and Metal Nation Radio, and with us, the guys from Kissing Candice. How are you guys doing? How are you? How's it going? Good. Welcome to Mayhem Festival. <laughs> First year for you guys, hopefully not the last. So, you, this is like big adult summer camp is what yes. I've heard. Is that what it's been like so far for you guys? So good. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Soaking it all in. Who who you guys been checking out the most so far? Uh, whoever we can, obviously. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of, a lot of white chapel. Right. A lot of die art, jungle rock, as much well, as actually, can. Actually, we probably saw all stage. We've seen every yeah, we've seen every check out second this one. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a little bit easier this year to do it because there's not nearly as many yes. bands. Like yes, a couple of years ago, there was four stages and like 9,000 bands. But <laughs> anyway, so for you guys, because you guys have been doing some touring, even though this is the first full length album, um, I believe. Yes. Um, you guys have been doing some touring over the last couple of years. So how does something like this, a touring festival, sort of differ from that for you guys? Uh, it kind of makes it all that worthwhile, to be honest. It's just like uh, you said, summer camp. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to be with bands that are, you know, our peers and stuff like that, and stuff bands that we look up to. Like I'm a huge King Diamond and Slayer fan, so it's it's definitely a nice variety. You know what I mean? As far as besides, you know, regular touring and just the festival atmosphere is great. All right. What's the hard part of uh, <laughs> of a tour like this? Getting, getting, getting up so early. Getting up 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 early. Getting 10 degrees lighter than that, so we're doing pretty good. So, anyway, all right, so let me ask you guys, when you when you put this together, what was sort of the goal of Kissing Cast? Did you have a fully formed idea of what you wanted, or did it sort of evolve? Something like completely different as far as with the music. Uh, you know, the image itself is like, you know, bands have done the mask, bands have done the makeup, you know, it's like, Slipknot's got that bondage look, Mushroom Head has that more monster look, so it's like, we'll do that more horror movie, creepy, killer type vibe with music that people won't expect to come from us. Same thing with the name. You, you hear the name Kissing Candace and you might think something. You would never think guys in masks. You right. know, love horror movies. And then the music also, like, you see us, you're thinking, okay, it's like maybe some sort of just like metal band or something, which we don't really label ourselves as metal. We don't really label ourselves as anything because our music is so diverse and it caters to a lot of people. Right. So it's just like we just we just go out there and we just do our thing, you know. It's just like this this is what it is, you know. It is what it is. From making the music to you know performing it, it's it, it all is just like yeah. Have you told Candace yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Let's talk about the new album, Blind Until I Burn. You guys actually changed the title, right? It was originally going to be something else. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was going to be called The Witch, which was, he actually came up with. That was more of a working title. Yeah, it was a working yeah, in progress. It yeah. kind of was a joke, and we rolled with it, and then we were like, all right. And then we just weren't, it was kind of stale, when we really wanted to go ahead with it. So what does Blind Until I Burn then sort of mean for you guys? Uh, that's just, you know, you take it what you how you want but it's essentially saying um, most people go through life with a veil over their eyes or following whatever stuff is shoved down their throat without really you know looking into the situation whether that be a religious thing whether that be a relationship thing whether that be just the way you live your everyday life <coughs> and not challenging and really truly finding themselves so blind to your burn is basically saying like you know do it before it's too late and, you know it's, and it's the end of the road one way or other in your life you know you've been blind to something and once you find out it's too late, you can rent by it. So it's just like, right. you know. So you mentioned it already. So how does your love of horror and the macabre play into the creative process for you guys? It's it's always it's it's a constant evolution with us. With you know the blood makeup and then with the first set of masks and the second set of masks, it's it's our love for horror. It's our love for theatrical. It's our love for the bands that we look up to, like the Slipknots, the Mushroom Heads, you know, Rob Zombie, Manson's, like right. it, it's it's. Big, it's production. Like we're, we're, we want to be a production band. We want pyro, we want lights, five props, you know, a whole stage show. So it's like we work in all of our love. Like everybody gets a little of something that they love into it. Right. So it, even with the masks, it's like, you know, we started out with just these clear and personal masks, which weren't really personal to us. This cycle, everybody has different masks that mean something. It's like an extension of the personality. And even musically, we always tilt our head, or, uh, sorry, tilt our hat to uh, 
you know, there's a couple songs on the record that are about horror movies that we love, but there's also some serious stuff in there. So it's not always serious, but we do somehow always try to pull that horror into there. I mean, there's a song in there about people on the stairs, uh, and Evil Dead. Evil Dead. But then there's also stuff about, you know, challenging your beliefs with religion, and et cetera, et cetera. So somehow always try to pull it. Now, you sort of mentioned this, you guys like the whole theatrical thing, obviously, with the mask, but you want to have all the other stuff that goes with it. How does that sort of play out when you're only getting like a 20 minute set out in the middle of the day like this? It's, it's like we, we try to figure out like what we can do visually, aside from ourselves, like in the background, but like you said, it's 20 minutes, it's outside. We don't have a crew to hang things and, and set things up. And by the time we did, it, we'd have to tear it down. So with this, it's more about, it's us leaving our mark. It's nothing around us. We're on an open stage with camp. So it's up to us, our masks and our music, to suck those kids in. And hopefully, a headliner that we do will, you know, will start small, but it'll work itself. Start pulling those people yeah, in. Yeah, pull those people to and then enjoy not just the music, but a production, mm -hmm. a show. You know that they'll be talking about it. You know, two hours later when they're at Denny's, you know, oh, remember that band with the mask? That, that's what, that's our goal. Right. The kids know. When you guys sort of got a fortunate slot where you're at, because a lot of this tour, it's going to be really hot, as you've already said, yes. and a lot of people are going well. There's a lot of these bands we don't know yet, so we're just gonna, it's too hot, we're gonna go out for Hell Yeah, Slayer, King Diamond, and they're missing a lot of the early bands. A year later, yeah. you get a chance to actually pick some of that up. Are you seeing pretty good crowds so far, getting a good response? Usually by the second or third song, because the way that it works is we're in between one of the, the first, right. Hell Yeah. They gotta so, go back yeah, and but, but, or it's between Hell Yeah and the It's product. the product ends, and as they're setting up for Hell Yeah, we're playing. Right. And it, it's hard because some people are already over at the main stage in shape, and like you said, they don't know the band, so they're like, oh, we're just gonna stay here and relax. Mm -hmm. But we're out there all day, switching off by our merch tent, walking around in the costume, barking up the storm, letting people know, hey, we're playing, come check us out. You know, but so the crowds have definitely been... Yeah, they, they come over, they're curiosity. You know, even if they're in the back, you see them watching. And it take, might take them a minute to warm up to realize, wow, like, this is cool. You know, this isn't cheesy, this isn't hokey. It's, it's, it's cool, so it's, it's good. It's definitely yeah. a battle. <laughs> now, when you originally started this, it was sort of this project you were doing, but it's evolved, as we can see, into a full band thing. Yeah. How did that take, when, you know, you did the EP first and everything, but with the songwriting, how did that evolve as a group? Well, I mean, originally, like, it was when I was in uh, the band before this, uh, it was always like, a, like something that I wanted to do because I could never do it with them. Like, I would right. always, I'd love to take something like horror and just make it like, just, just over the top. And it was always an idea. And then once I had left the band, I went right into the studio with, with producer Jeremy that actually worked with me on my, my prior band. And we just started shooting the ideas around and I would give him pretty much everything in my head I, I gave to him and he just made it come to life. And then I was just gonna be me with the tracks on stage screaming pretty much like that's that's what I had. But then he's like, dude, you need like a band. Like you need to make if you want to go big with this, you need a real band, you need to really go big with it. So he's best friends with the producer, so he said, Tom, Jeremy my way. And we happen to love everything hard on the same page. And from that, it just kind of built up to where we are now. It just kind of worked because, like, I'm a huge Misfits fan, a huge Motion Work fan, and so on. And honestly, I don't know too many of you, like, I don't know any musicians that are friends of mine that want to do costumes. Right. You know, when you find that, it's kind of something like you want to hang on to. So. Definitely worked out. <laughs> I grew up on Kiss, so it's okay. Like, <laughs> I totally get it. So, a couple of things before we get out of here. You have an affinity for the Troll Two movie, obviously. Yes. Yeah, what's so done. What's so fascinating about that film? Have you seen it? I have not seen. Uh, it. I think I saw the first one, but I never saw it. I have nothing to do with the second one. So I, it, now I'm gonna have to go home and try Netflix. I, I say this thing. every day. It's the worst, but the best horror movie ever because it's so cheesy and so dumb, but it's so good. Like it's just so good that you. You have to watch it, and I recommend it to everybody. The troll too. It's like trust me, like you'll love it, but you'll be like, this is so dumb, but you'll keep watching. It. It's got the worst acting. The director yeah. was an Italian director who can speak no English and he couldn't uh, <laughs> interact with his actors. I think the whole, all the actors are Mormons. Yeah. And it was filmed in Utah, and the plot makes no sense. It's called <laughs> Troll Two. There's not one troll in the movie. It's goblins. <laughs> yeah, it's goblins. It's just, it's just like ridiculous. It's, it's just so bad. Oh. It's all right, I'm gonna have to go find it. All right, so before we get out of here, the pointless question of the week: If you could give the kissing Candace 
I don't know what you want to call it, give it the Kissing Candace sort of flavor, what pop song would you Kissing Candace up? Because you've seen like Mushroom Hero. Head's done Adele, Hailstorm's done Lady Gaga and Daft Punk. What would oh, you guys do? Like a cover song in a way. What's that? Like a cover song? Yeah. Like a cover pop song? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Man Eater by John uh, Hall and Oates. Nice. Because it kind of has that, you know, you could kind of twist that a little bit. But... You guys? Uh, I just saw it one the other day and I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's something I think about every day. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of want to remix what's her name that does like I did like the Goonies song and stuff. What's her name? Cindy Lauper. I would like to do like a Cindy Lauper song and just really take it, make it all, make it like super heavy. Still have that that like dancing, happy like feel to it. But uh, something like Cindy Lauper would be fun to do. Nice guys from Kissing Candace here, Boise, Idaho, Day Five.